One time my wife made an arm zoom and hit me with a pan. Hurt like hell. Hey Pinnacle Studio peeps, how y'all doing out there? My name is Malik and I'm back on your screen with more Pinnacle Studio love from PinnacleStudioPro.com. Today we're going to be doing a tutorial on the pan and zoom effect in Pinnacle Studio 21 Ultimate. So let's jump off into the software and make it happen. Here we are in Pinnacle Studio 21 Ultimate. Before we get started, I want to remind you guys to subscribe to Pinnacle Studio Pro to see great tips and tricks just like this every Saturday. And I need you to let me know in the comment section below if you use Pan and Zoom for photos or videos and let me know how you use it in your next project. Let's start off by doing a little Pan and Zoom 101. Panning refers to horizontal movement or the position of a still or video. It can be used to move from one point of emphasis to another, shift across a video or image to create a sense of movement, and more. Zooming refers to a change from close up to wide shot or wide shot to close up. The pan and zoom feature in Pinnacle Studio 21 controls zoom, position, and rotation. Let's access the feature and go through the settings. You wanna left click on the clip that you want to apply the pan and zoom effect to, and it'll turn orange or have an orange box around it. It'll thank you for selecting it for this effect. Next thing you want to do is go up to editor. And then you want to select pan and zoom. When you access this feature, your interface will change to the default preview settings for pan and zoom, and the words pan and zoom will be highlighted in orange. On the left, you'll find the editor window and the pan and zoom settings. You'll actually need to resize the window to see the next area. So if you place your cursor between the window of the pan and zoom source and the other section that's next to it, you'll see a line with two arrows. You hold down your left mouse and then you drag this out and you can better see this section and this section is the timeline where any keyframes you add will be applied if you want to learn more about keyframes watch my how to use keyframes tutorial now let's go ahead and move this back over and get back to the rest of the interface In the middle, you'll find a pan and zoom source window with your project timeline beneath it. This window allows you to view the original clip with boxes that represent changes made to the view. To the right of that window, you'll find the pan and zoom window with your project timeline beneath it as well. This window allows you to preview what the finished changes will look like on the timeline. So let's go back to the pan and zoom settings section and go through each of those settings. So here you have your edit mode. So there's two edit modes you can choose between. There's static and there's animated. When you select static, which is what I'm gonna pick right now, there will be no movement. Everything will be static, it'll be locked. Now, the area that will be seen in a static zoom is represented by a white box. Here in the pan and zoom source window, you can see around the edge, there's a white box here. And in the pan and zoom view window, it shows the whole screen that this white box is around. Now, you can change this in several different ways. The first way is using these nodes. So if you place your cursor over these dots or these nodes, you'll see that your cursor changes to a line with two arrows. And based on where you place it, it'll be positioned differently. So I'm gonna place my cursor over this node. I'm gonna hold down my left mouse and I'm gonna drag this in. As you can see, the box changed the position to only cover this area. And for the pan and zoom view, it's only showing that area that the white box is around, okay? So if I wanted to move this to a different area, I can place my cursor inside of the white box until I see crosshairs with arrows on it. Hold down my left mouse and now I can drag this to where I want it to be. And you see that view changes here in the pan and zoom view window again. 
Now, if I wanted to rotate this, there's a node that's outside of the box here at the top. And if I place my cursor over that, it'll turn into a circle with an arrow. I can hold down my left mouse button and I can rotate this. All right, now I can move everything back to its original position, which I'm gonna do right now. Just gonna click on the name here. I don't wanna double click it. And it says you double click to reset when I hover over it. So I'm gonna double click these. And it's back to the original static zoom that we had on here. So now let's talk about the next section, which is presets. So there are two presets that apply to static mode. First one's called static small zoom. So if I click on that, you see that it zooms in a little bit. The box just kind of went in a little bit from the outside and the pan and zoom view jumped in a little bit closer. And then there's static big zoom. So if I click on static big zoom, it's gonna zoom in more and you can see that represented by the box and also by the pan and zoom view window. So you can also use the sliders to change the different parameters. So you have your zoom, so you can zoom in here. Uh, you've got your horizontal, so you can move left or right. You got your vertical and you've got your rotation. So you got all of those sliders that you can use as well. So once again, I'm going to just double click on these to bring them all back to zero. When you select animated for your edit mode, things change up a little bit. Basically, movement will be created from one position to another position. The starting position is represented by a green box and the ending position is represented by a red box. The final result of the movement will preview in the pan and zoom view window when the play button or the space bar is pressed or when the play hair is scrubbed along the timeline. Let's talk about some of these presets. The first two don't apply because they're for static, but then we have one called slow zoom in. So if we select slow zoom in, then what will happen is when we scrub the timeline here, we'll see the white box will appear and it will zoom in. So the white box is representing what's happening. And on the pan and zoom view window, you see it's actually zooming in to where the red box is. The next preset we have on here is called slow zoom out. So basically if we select slow zoom out, the green box is now the beginning here in the middle and it goes out to the red box, which is here at the end. So if I scrub this timeline, you'll see the white box will appear showing what's gonna happen. And on the right hand side, you see the actual zooming out. So then we have pan left and you get the idea. The video is gonna pan to the left. And then the last one we have is pan right. So I bet you can't tell me what that one's gonna do. Yeah, pan to the right. Okay. So we got all those things set up. So let's talk about how you can go ahead and apply keyframes. So I'm gonna change this to slow zoom in. Wherever my playhead is or whatever keyframe is selected is the frame that any changes will be applied to. So I'm gonna make this window bigger so I can actually get a better idea of where my keyframes are. So if I'm here over the first set of keyframes and I use the zoom slider, then it's gonna apply that change to that first keyframe. And you'll see how the green thing or the green box moved in. So if I move my playhead to the last set of keyframes, and let's say I change the zoom again, you see the red box changes. So basically wherever you have your playhead, if it's over a keyframe or if it's over a different position, 
you're going to add a keyframe and make changes there. So if I move this to the first keyframe here, I can manually use the node to change things if I want to. So basically you can use all the same changes that you used before with the static, just using them for the animated. So what I want to do is just create my own pan and zoom to give you a look of how it's going to work when you add your own keyframes. So I have my playhead here over the first set of keyframes or over the first position. So the changes that I make will apply to the green box. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in the settings I want. So I wanted to start off on a really close zoom and I want it to be over that little remote control over there that he's holding in his hand. And so now you see that at the first position where my playhead is, these keyframes were zoomed in on the remote. So now for the last keyframe, I want this to be full screen. So I'm going to move my playhead to the last position over these last set of keyframes. And I'm just going to double click on zoom. And now the red box is all the way zoomed out. So we know it's going to start off here and it's going to zoom all the way out. But I wanted to zoom all the way out before the end, and I wanted to stay zoomed all the way out for a few seconds. So I'm going to move my playhead to 10 seconds. And at this position, this is where I want it to be full screen. So as you can see here, these settings, it's not. It's, it's on its way trying to get to full screen. So in order to make it full screen at 10 seconds, I can just double click on each one of these to bring it back to zero. And now what will happen is it'll start off zoomed in on that remote. It'll be full screen and it, it will stay full screen from 10 seconds to 20 seconds or whatever it is on there. So those are those settings. So basically give you an idea how to use these settings here on the parameters instead of using the nodes. But there are two more settings I want to talk about here. First one's low pass. So if you turn on low pass, it applies a filter which decreases any flickering caused by the movement of the image. If you don't have any flickering that you see, I wouldn't worry about using it. But if you do, turn on the low pass filter and it helps to um, minimize some of that flickering. And then you have motion. So the first motion is called ease in. So what that means is that at the beginning keyframe, it's going to ease into any motion that you started. It's not going to just start off and like any jarring motion where it's just going to immediately go. It's going to start off slow and ramp up to the speed that it needs to get to that next position on the out of your keyframes. Then you have ease out. So basically what that does is it's going to ease out into its last move. So if you choose ease out, then basically what happens is on your last keyframe, it's going to actually slow down as before it hits that last keyframe, right? It's going to ease out of the move. And then you have smooth. So for smooth, it, it eases in and eases out. So it's smooth on both ends. And then linear, it just goes the same speed throughout. No change to any speed, doesn't ease in, doesn't ease out, just same speed. All right, so that's basically it. What I'm going to do now is in order to just go back to my normal view, I'm going to click on properties. And then I'm going to click on library. And now if you play back this clip, you get to see the wonderful, beautiful pan and zoom. All right, Pinnacle Studio peeps, I want to thank you so much for watching this video all the way through to the end. It truly means the world to me. And now I want to send a shout out to one of our subscribers, Memory Lane Videos. Memory Lane Videos makes nostalgia and history videos. So if you're into nostalgia, history, documentary, great photo montages and things like that, head on over to his channel, check out a couple of his videos, and if you're feeling what he's dealing, make sure that you subscribe. If you guys want to get a shout out like Memory Lane Videos did, make sure that you go to the video description and complete our shout out request form. If you have a tutorial you'd like us to make, head over to the video description and complete our tutorial request form. 
Now that I'm done with that, I got a few things I need you to do for me. The thumb. The one that's pointed in the upward direction. Click on it. It lets people know that the content in this video is good and that they should watch it too. If you got any comments, questions, you just want to talk or chop it up, leave those things in the comment section below. And last but not least, smash the subscribe button and then click on the bell. When you click on the bell, you receive notifications every time I upload content to YouTube. And that way you don't miss out on any of the learning and all of the fun. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.